Welcome. My name is George Pearson, and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos in my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques you'll find in various software programs. Right now, I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video, though, is different. This is part of a new series of longer demonstrations that I'm doing to show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish using a variety of techniques and tools. All of the images I use in these projects are in the public domain and I've included a link to the pictures in the video description in case you want to work along using the same images. Okay, let's move on to the project. In this special Photoshop Elements text project, we're going to be making a metallic looking style text. Now on this one we'll be using a large square flat typeface. And let's go over here click on that layer. Bring up our type tool. And you can see there what I'm using is called Poplar Standard Black. And let me see if I can find that one again here. There it is. Just a, a real flat squared kind of typeface. It, it looks like it's maybe punched out of metal, so that's why I chose that one. It's a pretty nice typeface for that. On top of that, we'll be doing some tricks here to get kind of this streaked or brushed metal effect. And there'll be just some other tricks in here to give us some of these highlights and things to really make it look like it's metallic. Okay, let's go ahead and start this. I'm going to first copy this whole file, select all, edit, copy. That just sets the settings for the file in the clipboard. We can then just minimize that. File new blank file. And if I choose clipboard as a preset, it then presets everything to match that previous file. So everything will be staying the same size for us. And let's make this a bit larger. And we'll zoom in. There we go. Now we want a black background for this. Let's set our type here to black. Go up to the fill. And let's just double check that we're on black right there. Okay. Fill the layer. There's our black background. Let's now put our type in and go to our type tool. Again, I'm using Poplar Standard Black. Any big fat flat typeface will work out fine for this. If you don't happen to have this typeface, you can find this online. Just do a search for Poplar font and you'll find that. We want the color white for the text. There we go. The size doesn't matter. We'll adjust that to fit once we have our text on here. And just type in metallic. There we go. And let's just position and adjust the size. A little taller possibly. Looks pretty good. So there's our, our basic type for this project. Now, we're going to be filling this with that that look, that kind of brushed metallic or brushed aluminum look. We'll give it a little more of a bluish tint this time, I think, just for variation for my sake. But before we do that, I want to copy this text layer. So take your text layer, copy it, and hide the original. That just gives me a safety. I can always go back to this layer if I mess things up in my nice clean text layer. Now on this layer, normally I would rasterize or simplify the layer at this point. We don't need to for this particular technique. What we do need is to create that metallic kind of brushed look. Go up to the New Layer button and make a new layer. We're going to be filling this layer. We want to fill it with black. And, and it doesn't really matter as, as long as your foreground and background colors are black and white, you're fine. Now we changed the foreground color to white when we changed for our text here. So let's just make sure that it is set back to black again. Click on the paint bucket, window, color swatches, and click on black. There we go. Now let's fill that. It gives us a black layer. Don't worry about it being solid black. All that really matters is that your foreground and background colors are black and white. They can be either way. You know, foreground white, background black, foreground black, background white. It doesn't matter as long as they're opposites. Let's go up now to the filter menu, come down to render and fibers. 
There's a standard fiber. This is the setting that we used in a previous video on making a wood texture, and it works great for doing wood texture. But you can also use it for a brushed metallic texture. Now watch as I adjust the variance here. Pull it down like this, it gets kind of real soft. Pull up here, it gets real hard. So we're going to use a fairly soft texture. And then if I pull the strength up, you see it gets stronger and stronger and thinner, thinner lines. If I go clear to the top, I get these real, real thin lines in there. Pull the variance down to get that kind of effect right there. So it's just real thin lines, almost looking as if it is a brushed metal surface. So the trick is real, real low on the variance. I'm using it just down at one right now. I think I think two. Just a little more variation in there. And as I adjust the strength, so it gets softer and more wood-like towards the bottom, but you get stronger and stronger vertical streaks the higher up you go. And that then gives us that effect of it being, you know, brushed, like a brushed metal look. So real low variance, real high strength gives us that effect. Let's go ahead and fill that. There we are. Now I want to rotate this around so we have it at a bit of an angle. It just looks better at an angle. So I'm going to zoom out a bit here, like that, and image rotate. Let's just do free rotate layer. And I'll give it a little bit of a twist, kind of like that, and choose OK. Now once we have it rotated, we can then come in and grab our control handles, stretch the image out so that it fills the whole space. That's why I made it a smaller picture there. Then pull it down a bit further like that and a bit further out. Okay, there we go. Now it's it's filled. So you don't want to have any of this black showing anywhere. So just get a nice fill like that. Choose OK. And then let's zoom back in again. So there's our texture. That kind of our, our brushed our brushed metal texture. Now if it's too solid for you, you can come in and blur this out just a little bit, a little bit of Gaussian blur to soften that effect up. It's up to you if you want to do that or not, but I'll show you that technique. So blur, Gaussian blur, and if you do just a little bit of this, you can see it softens that effect up. I happen to like it being a little bit hard, but just a little bit of a Gaussian blur is not too bad. It just kind of helps that effect. So there we go. There is that brush look. So that takes care of the surface of our metal. Now I want to put this inside of the text and we'll do that by making a clipping mask. So right click where it says layer and create clipping mask. And that just puts that stroke effect inside of the text just like that. Real pretty, you know, straightforward, easy to do. I think we can zoom in at this point a little bit. There we are. Now if you want to go a little further on this, you can make this coloration a little bit more interesting. And we'll do that with Enhance, Adjust Color, Hue Saturation, and Colorize like that. And let's find a kind of a bluish tint in there somewhere. And you can come in, you can adjust the amount of saturation on that. So you have just a little bit of a bluish tint. I don't want to have it blue like that. I want just a little bit of a bluish tinge to it right down there. So pretty low on the saturation. And I think that looks pretty good. All right, so there is our basic text look. Now, we're going to take this again a little bit further. We want to do a bevel emboss effect on this. And we want to come in and put in another bit of text on top of this particular text. There's a little, you know, a different quality on that. So we're going to be doing a couple of things in here to achieve this next level for the effect. Now I'm going to copy these two layers here. 
I'll, I'll leave these as again safety layers so let's copy that one and let's copy the text layer and I'll put that underneath there we'll need to, since I copied those that got rid of that clipping mask so let's just create clipping mask there it is and do the same up here right click clipping mask let's hide these two so those are my safeties that's my text and then there's my texture with clipping mask nicely saved now I want to come in here and simplify this text layer right click simplify and select these two layers we're going to merge these layers together right click merge layers that gives us that text as just straight text right there that's what we want to have is just straight text on that let's make a copy of this layer so now I have two copies of that layer we're now going to bring in the text a little bit on this top layer we're going to actually bring the you know cut some of the edge off of that so we'll have one layer a little bit thinner than the other layer so hold down the control key click on the icon and that makes a selection of your text like that we're now going to modify that selection so select modify and contract it set at 20 pixels from a previous discussion I'll just choose okay see what happens and that's probably a bit too much I think that's too wide on that so let me just undo that and let's try 10 this time modify contract put in 10 that's pretty good that's what I want so it's leaving a bit of an edge out there now we have the inside selected what I want to do is select the outside so select inverse and then hit the delete key now you won't see anything yet because I have the other text is in behind so let's just deselect this so if I hide the other text see that here's our new text in front where I've made it smaller by cutting off that outside edge and then there's the old text so new text and old text okay we'll save our new text for a second come back to the old text layer and let's put a bevel and emboss on this using our effects well, this one right down here this is the simple sharp inner so drag it over onto your text and that gives you that sharp edge we can now adjust this or modify that layer layer style style settings and then let's adjust the bevel so it's about what we had with our cut in part of our text okay so it gives us that kind of beveled edge now the main thing I wanted on that is the darkness on the right and bottom and then the lightness top and left hand side let's go back to our layers and the top layer back on again notice that the size is a little bit off that's fine because what I wanted was just that beginning of that edge effect now we're going to come in and increase the contrast I should put a layer in here above that background layer so a new layer right here and we're going to be putting in some highlights and some shadows on this layer so let's go over to our paintbrush and let's start with a good size brush that's too big we bring the brush size down a little bit that's I think that's pretty good about the same thickness as the letters in case you're trying to match that let's set our color to white here we go and let's make sure that this is about about halfway on the opacity you know, somewhere in there someplace that's fine so it doesn't go too fast now with this I can come in and then painting on this new layer we're going to paint in like this and actually paint in some highlights on our text to show you what we're going to be doing here if we go to this layer now and change this to overlay you can see how it's now just being applied just to what's underneath of it so we don't have that you know that white outside but it allows us to come in and now paint in some extra highlights onto our 
text. And so I'll do wherever the, the light would be coming in and lighting things up. Do a bit of that just to increase that that look. We'll do the exact same thing but with a dark color on the opposite side. So there's our highlights. Let's now change the text color here. Window swatches in black. On the same layer I'm just going to come in now and just darken down some of the outside areas. And that helps to give it that metallic look because metal is going to have those real sharp contrasts between the light and the dark. So that's the effect that we're trying to achieve here. Okay, so there's the basic metal look. Now we can take it a bit further by using the same technique and putting in a big highlight across our lettering. You can do a couple things there as well. If you want to, you can put in a very subtle gradient on your lettering and then put in a highlight. We'll just do just the highlight here. Let's go to our top layer, to a new layer above that layer. Let's switch the paint color over to white again. There it is. I'm just going to come down and just do kind of a big streak like that. And I'm just freehanding this right now. Let's now change this to overlay and that puts it right on the metal itself as you can see there instead of anything else. If it's too much you can always come back and just adjust your opacity to tone down that effect a little bit. And if you want you can do the exact same trick with some dark out here at the edges to make it look like there's some kind of a light streaking across that. Let me just show you that quickly. Let's change our color to black. There it is. And we'll make the brush size a lot bigger this time, not that big. Yeah, in there somewhere. Maybe a little too large. That's good. And same thing, I'm just going to come in here and hit these other edges like that. So we have the white in the middle and the dark on the edges and it gives us that real nice metallic effect. So there you go. That's how you make metallic text inside of Photoshop Elements. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop Photography Project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.